I said calcium carbonate and the scientist said calcium carbonate because I'm really not very scientific. So, um, and she showed a picture of plankton and so did I. So I was like, wow, this could really be a useful meeting. So we'll soon see. You know. Everything has its roots in nature. You know, there, there's nothing else as a departure point. So you've got to be fascinated by it as a designer. And, you know, I'm always swinging. I like extreme opposites. So I quite, what I quite liked about the conversation was that we could talk about primeval and we could talk about the future in equal measures. And I think it's a very powerful combination. I think all too much abstract um, research goes on and we need to focus a bit more all of these amazing efforts to crack some big intractable problems that exist and I think mobilization of these fantastic resources and all the power we've got at our disposal is completely possible but I think you know in a lot of um, cases all of those efforts are too fragmented and I think what was universally decided there was that people spend too much time with their own people so I spend more too much time with design people and they spend too much time with other scientists rather than being cross-disciplinarian and I think all of them everybody seemed eager to break out of the ghetto of, of their own disciplines when you're lacking resources when you're forced to act um, and it's about survival, it becomes a very different story. Um, and I think we've, we're all a bit too fat, you know, we're all a bit too um, complacent as, you know, we spend a lot of time pushing objects around, you know, around in circles. There's an underlying um, interest in it, but I don't kid myself of my hypocrisy or not in these matters. I'm interested in it, I always have been actually since I did a school project on sustainability when I was 14. I had a very right-on father who's, and my parents are, are, are very keen on those subjects. So I know an amount about it and a lot of my work is informed by it, but by no means all of it. I mean, my um, my attitude to it is to try and make things that people don't throw away. I mean, it's as simple as that. I try and make things as solid and as robust and as long-lasting long as possible. But I've been criminally um, culpable of doing the opposite as well. There's a difference between being an artist and being a designer. Ultimately, you're designing... You know, design is designed for a lot of... a variety of, of reasons, but since it became my living. I didn't go to art school to decide to be a designer. I made things for pleasure and then I started selling them. And it was that that catalyzed my movement into design. That people were prepared to buy things from me was the reason I became a designer. So the commerce has always been intermingled in the way that for a lot of other people it wasn't. A lot of other people start off theoretical and are encouraged to be very theoretical, but I was always very practical. I could only make something if I'd sold the one before. That's the other factor which makes me slightly different, is that I learned how to design through making things with my own hands. So, and diverting sometimes industrial processes to make them simpler and affordable for myself. So I see the factory as really the opportunity in a way. It's like, how can I use these tools in a different way to how they're using them? How can I be more economical? How can I make something that they're not making already? And that's really very often, you know, the departure point um, because it's a great joy to me to see how people make things and, and to... And to be productive. You know, I like making things. That's what kicks me off. You know.